Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye Well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I try my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone I'm sober again I'm catching up on there Hello, everybody Welcome to Short Bangers. This is episode 80. How am I? Uh, joined tonight by Colin and John. Colin, how you doing? Good. We'll start talking now. Or we'll start talking when you re- start just recording. Fucking go for it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were laughing at? You said you pressed the record button. I'm still blabbing on. Lucky that it was no libelous or nothing. Aye. I hope. Not no this time. <laughs> how are you doing, John? So, aye, fine. Um, pretty good. Speaking of, I, uh, could, I could tell you that it's been an interesting week like on monday was it monday night tuesday morning tuesday morning i try to go out for a walk with the dog to do his morning ablutions and um <clears throat> it's just like a wee walk around the block and i came across some police tape and then i saw police stand on the other side of it and i come back around and uh i try to be a bit nosy and i go down to speak to the copper on the other side of the tape for the other direction in the afternoon when i take murphy for a longer walk and the boy says oh can i tell you now it's just an active crime scene you can't come down here and then later on, uh, CID come to the door and they tell me what's happened, that there was a, a body had been found nearby, actually a lot closer than they let on to, to begin with. And they said to me, like, they asked me, like, for some details, just the usual stuff, like, you're aware of any disturbances, um, any damage to cars in the area, that? I'm like, nah, nah, listen, if we've got a six-month-old daughter. If we were going to get disturbed by anything during the night, it would have been her, but actually she slept through. And they said, uh, so you stay by yourself? And I says, no, no, I'm like, my daughter, my wife stays and they came back to the door the day after saying, oh, we might have to come back to speak to your wife. It depends on whether we manage to get everyone else in. We get, like, sufficient coverage across the area. So they come to the door this afternoon after they've finished college, and the wife opens it. She says to them, uh, they, they introduce themselves, they show, like, their warrant badges, and that say, we're CID, like, we were spoke to your husband before, like, can we come in and just uh, cover some details with you? And she says, hi, but can you be quick about it? Because I'm going to take the bear to a pyjama party. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, well, that was only last week we were talking about finding a dead body when you were at a walk. Was it only last week? I, if it, I maybe last week, or certainly one of the episodes uh, recently. Oh, for finding a body, you just found the crime scene. Ah, again, like, just, I, don't, I think it was maybe like three o'clock in the morning, so there was no chance, like, if I can pick the right time for to sort out Murphy's diet, I could have been out bloody walking him about <laughs> while he was having diarrhea everywhere. Uh, right, got some questions to get through, put some time on the clock to get us started off. First question of the night comes for Bing. Johnny, who um, was referencing our, our Heat Bangers episode for last weekend. He's enjoyed this greatly. Also inspired a question for Short Bangers. Is there anything else, anything other than tones that you can describe as dulcet? I always thought the word dulcet was uh, sort of disparaging, but it's actually a compliment. Yeah, the dulcet. I can't tones remember the exact. A... Definition, but aye, it's quite a complimentary thing. So, would you just, des- I don't know, would you describe someone's highlights as being dulcet? Your sweet and soothing. That's what it, it's, it's kind of that. That's the definition of it. So, but dulcet oh, sounds the. I've just, ag- I've just ag- had a dulcet wank. <laughs> <laughs> a dulcet shite. A dulcet. <laughs> oh, that was a dulcet good day. <laughs> Uh, but I, I've never really heard it used to describe anything other than tones, so no. maybe we should uh, adopt it and you're, start. You're, you're creeping into um, off the ball territory here. This is one of their this is one of their topics because they done that the other week. Any any words that only ever go with another word, and it was like um, I can't even remember what they were now. But it was like like the kind of the transfer window slam shut. That was never one of them. But there was there was. Uh, Oh, fuck me. I've, I've w- walked into a path here that I can't get the answer to. You need to listen to the podcast. I'll text 380295 and ask them what the answers were. But there was there was things that you only use, a certain word to prefix another word. Aye. You'll never use it in that. And del- dulcet tones is obviously one of the answers that they never used. I think what you mean, Colin, is that Stuart Cosgrove off air is whispering to Tam Cowan, we are virgin on long buyers territory here. <laughs> Aye, that may be it. That's one for them. Send it in. 
Aye, what's, Aye. what's our text number? Our, our text number. <laughs> 80295. I'm trying to remember one of them during this. Aye. Uh, TG Willis, uh, Panloaf, eat the heel or not? Do you stand on a Panloaf? Oh, no, obviously, they'll literally stand on it, but do you, do you buy a Panloaf? Is a Panloaf like the the one with the thick heels? Is that the, I was thinking it had been the, the thick um, crust, sorry. Aye, the mother's pride, I would take that aye. as a Panloaf. Aye, aye, like the big, uh, the big thick, thick, almost aye, edible I crust. That. I would toast that. I wouldn't have it like a sandwich with it on hand, but I would toast it. I have a bit of bread. Uh, toast what's, it. Your, what's your bread? The choice, what do you buy? We, well, we've, we've just changed it recently, actually, because we were going through too much. But uh, we, were, we were the war buttons, um, blue one. The medium. The war button, the orange, the, the toasty one. Ah, Aye, see, that's good. But you, you didn't get as much yet for your money, yeah, because it's thicker. I think uh, war buttons has just been toast specific bread. And ah, weirdly, yeah, like, that's a to mistake. contradict myself, to contradict myself, I do think it makes an awfully good sandwich as well, though. But I just look at it and I think you, you are, your purpose is to be toasted. Oh, well, uh, you know what's why that's bollocks? It's too big for the toaster. It's too tall. Like I've got a deep toaster, it. but yeah. it's too tall for the. Which I think is a design flaw. The, the bread manufacturers need to get together with the toaster manufacturers. And sort themselves out. In fact, the Warburton's one, if you try to make like a, like a Breville style toasty in it, you're fucked. Like that, that bread's way too big for yeah. it. Doesn't it work at all? So there yeah. are more than one flaw to Warburton's it. bread, like apart from being associated with Rangers. <laughs> it's Aye. too big. <laughs> but it, it's tasty though. There's a decent loaf of bread. Um, uh, what's your top three best series you've watched? That's for Andy. Top three series, John. Sopranos, the US Office, and Breaking Bad. Well, I've never watched the US Office. I've never watched that. I watched the first. Well, I like. I watched the first two, I think, and I thought, oh, this is just a badly made British one. But I know there's a lot more episodes, so it is actually on my planner because I think I need to get into that. I, loved I the love office. the UK office, I absolutely love that. And I'd probably put that in my top three, actually. Yeah. Um, and I've never watched the US one, other than, as I say, the first two, and I went, oh, they're just making it badly. Um, I think they realised that they were making it badly, and then they just let every character, every storyline develop on its own. And they got, I, and there's so many episodes, really isn't there? Yeah. Aye, there's only two <clears> episodes, there's episodes in the, Yeah. Um, West Wing, that's good. You ever watched that? No. Um, and the I like the Sopranos as well. Dexter, it was quite good. Finished badly, but they've re they're redoing it. Um, well, Ray Donovan, I'll put that in. So Ray Donovan, the West Wing, in the Office. Yeah, uh, I would go. For, I probably would have to include the Office. That's probably my favourite favourite series of anything ever. So, and then. I would go Sopranos, probably, and then Bang Bang, it's Houston Mortimer. Mm -hmm. Shooting stars. Shooting stars. Stand no, but, uh, I don't know if you get shooting stars as like a as a box set. With Bang Bang, Houston Mortimer. Like, I've I've got the series just on a like a, a DVD. It's no. So it's obviously, there's no enough to make a box set of it, but you've got all the episodes on DVD. It's fucking quality. Uh, Kaiser Sozzi said, if you had the luxury of a second job bracket, Tory Cunts, uh, what would it be? And podcasts don't count. <laughs> You're the second job. Is there anyone is there anyone out there who moonlights as an MP? I was just thinking MP was going to say that. <laughs> well, is their second job? Well, I think half the fucking Tories are doing the uh, MP Jeff and it's their second job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But obviously, the way that, that it's been spun is that they're an MP first and foremost, and they've just got no, a much better no. paid job on the side. I think every single person in the cabinet's second job is an MP because the first job is to run the country, the second one's to do their constituency. They probably actually pay somebody else to deal with all the yeah, constituency yeah. shite. No, because they've not got time because they're away fucking sending troops to war and that. Or they uh, um, lobbying for fucking. <clears throat> I feel like if we give you long enough call and this will culminate in a drain the swamp call to arms <laughs> I just watched the clip earlier I think it was shared in the the, the, 
the thingy group, the quick band group. Um, it was the boy on Scottish Debate Night. He's a comedian. I think it's Darren Garvey or Darren McGarvey. I can't remember oh, his surname. Lucky, lucky, lucky Garvey. Aye, the, some of the, that the, the rapper guy. Uh, and he just totally destroyed them on that uh, the other night, the Tories. About the, about the, how can you forget 30 grand? You can only forget 30 grand if it doesn't matter to you. It's inconsequential. I think Douglas Ross was a bit, was a bit harsh on some of the Douglas Ross stuff, I suppose, because he does give it away. And he's just forgot to... Oh. Although, as somebody said, he doesn't forget to pay his expenses in the way. So. Oh, there is a fucking remember his expenses. The, the other thing, there was a, a video on Twitter, and again, I can't mean, if I reference this already, but it showed the dates that he was refereeing, it never declared, and what was fucking, he should have been dead in Parliament at that time. Is that right? And that's probably another right. reason why he wasn't going to fucking show it, because you're like, mm. well, mate, you're picking up a salary, you may be giving away your referee salary or whatever, but the actual salary you're getting, you're not fucking doing the job yet. Yeah. Cunt. He's got three jobs, I can't know. You know what I mean? Aye. He's got the MSP, the MP, and linesman, or whatever it is. Well, there might even be another job that's not listed there because I was hearing on the radio the other day that he was trying to get a Scottish family to appear on Gogglebox because we're not represented. Aye. Like, that's a good use of his time. Yeah. Gogglebox. Gogglebox. <laughs> Gogglebox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what would your second job be then, John? If, if, if we steer it away from the fucking MPs for a minute and. <clears throat> Uh, or for the rest of the episode, probably it's for the best if we do that. What would uh, what would your second job be? Do you remember um, magazines like FHM? There was what was the other one? There was Maxim. There was quite a few of them. But in the sort of uh, I wouldn't I don't know what you call them at the back, like the classifieds. They used to have a thing in there saying that um, you could sign up right. and become like a, an escort. Stop. Stop. Right. You're you're telling me that. Because when you were buying them, you would have been late teens. Ah. Right. And you need <laughs> the classifieds at the end. <laughs> I know. <Are> fuck. <laughs> no, like, I, I, I like to read. And I read the whole thing, and there was stuff in the back. And one of those, one of the things that was in the back was you could sign up and become a male escort. I think I would like to be a male escort on the side. Strictly no sex, just conversation. <laughs> yes, like okay, a pretty so. woman. <laughs> 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 Just to hang out with folk and get paid for it. Stinky Aye. pals and that. Aye. Surely you're doing that for the shacking. That's the only reason you're doing that. Surely. Back then it was to try and get my home. Nowadays, because <laughs> I'm married, it's for the conversation. <laughs> it's still there. I think you'd get much wages at that. I have had the opportunity, <laughs> believe it or not, I've had the opportunity to be, a, what is it, they call it a life model? or a, um, What's the one where you basically sit there in the mood and folk will draw you? Aye. I've had I the opportunity to do that. Model but the wife wouldn't sign off on it. Um, I would, ah, fuck, I'd do all sorts for money, to be honest. Uh, so see, like, the only fans and whatnot, I'd fucking wank it in a sock and sell it if, if there was a buyer for it. <laughs> like, I've, I've got absolutely no issue in rinsing internet perverts. <laughs> Aye, well, we could, we could see how it goes, John. We could so if, if any of our listeners today. would like uh, a used pair of my pants... Fiver, fiver a pair. <laughs> they, they and focus on all that, don't they? Like only fans or something like that. Because they were all up in arms. It was in the news that only fans said we're not going to do porn anymore. And everybody <laughs> went fucking mental about it. <laughs> all the internet perverts. Well, all the internet perverts and then all the internet uh, porn stars that are that were flogging it off. Yeah, they yeah, fucking yeah. nuts. Then they changed their mind on it. They must have went, shit, we realised how much they were making off it or... It was some, I'm sure it was something ridiculous, like 95% of our income came through adult content. So there was absolutely no yeah. way that they could shut it down. And that's well, they could have shut it down, but they, they were making too much money off of the back of it. So for your subscriptions, they must take a certain percentage as a, I don't know, like a processing fee or whatever, like Ticketmaster. So what I like about this conversation is, is the fact that the question is totally open, right? There's no limits on it. It's only your imagination is where it's limited. And the thing that you came up with for your second job is, why couldn't I suck? This will get paid for something nice for free. Aye, aye, but, but I just want to try, and cut, down, see, want to try and cut down on my overheads and do something I enjoy. <laughs> Dogs are cheap and I like masturbating. Like, what do you want me to say? Many times a day you're in your favour, name it. Uh, currently, um, well, I'd need to build up. I'd need to scale up my operations because it's not happening often at the moment. <laughs> and, and then, would you, aye, like, no if, if you were sick, age. <laughs> there has to be a point where, aye, the, the, you know, the third or fourth one of the day that you were trying to sell, you'd be like, you're going to have to get him a discount because that's not getting as much of a... Aye, we'll call that the bronze category. 
<laughs> Gold membership gets the primo uh, product. First one in the morning. Uh, kind of what the mental thing is, I can almost guarantee I'll get a DM for somebody saying, will John really do that? <laughs> one, yes, and two, I'll wear something of yours if you want me to wank into that as well. Paul, what was your second job? I don't care how you follow that. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be doing that. I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with the operation. I just wouldn't... Uh, not my age. Not my age. Um, I, I'd probably want to do something that you get a lot of money for, for a, no very much effort. What, what is that? It's one of the jobs. Masturbating on camera. <laughs> Couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. I think I've always thought, and um, I think <laughs> this is the irony, right? So you remember, there's a Kevin Bridges joke about the guy who up the back of the bus says, "Oh, see that boy Mark Zuckerberg? He should charge you a pound every time you want to use Facebook." I can't remember exactly what the punchline is, but here is me as a poor man saying, "This is how you should make money." <laughs> and I've always thought that the way that you should make money is by managing other people's money. I had any fancy Sorry. in that. <laughs> it came Sorry. out quite like, quite do, do something in like, uh, you know, like Christian Horner's job or something at, at Red Bull or, or the boy Toto at uh, Mercedes in the Formula One. They just sit and go, right, drive it faster. Drive it faster, Lewis. <laughs> aye, aye, there's somebody behind you. There's somebody behind you. And that's what they basically do. I've watched the Formula One drive to survive. Right? They get paid a fucking fortune because they're senior members of Mercedes or Red Bull. And, and the equivalents, but they're the they're ones that are winning, so you want them. And basically, they just go, right, come in and get your tyres changed and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's quite fucking. Quite so these like your strategists, the guys that can have an influence on whether you win or lose already. Uh, I already. don't know if that's exactly what they are, or if they're just in charge of the people that make the decisions. You know what I mean? So they're going to the strategists. What do you think? Two pit stops, one pit stop. Right, Lewis, you're doing one, two, the day. Man, so they're just kind of managing the whole operation and just sitting there like taking all the credit and the glory and that. And it's a glamorous lifestyle, like just flying about private jets, living in the fancy hotels. You know what I mean? That's a like that. I, I, I could get on board with that because I'm, like, I'm not a huge fan of the, the F1. So if you're doing that, I would mean, do you know when they come in for the pit stop and they've got the sort of humanic uh, <laughs> equipment to take the... But there's somebody oh, holds the cable. Either. Nah, somebody holds the cable. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'd do that. <laughs> 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 I'd, I'd, by the way, I so wouldn't pay you as much as I'm, I wouldn't pay you as much as I'm paying myself, I mind. So, Heck yeah. It's still just a lifestyle. Aye. Just being a party. Being a party. I, I watched that uh, Drive to Survive and the boy Toto for Mercedes was something like, he signed up for so many more years and he said, uh, it was a big decision because I had to, something like 300, 300 days in a hotel a year. I thought, that's not bad, that's a lot of cooked breakfast, like, <laughs> baking and eggs 300 times a year, you know what I mean? I think I would get bored of that, though. I think I would either. If you could totally create a job, right, and say, like, you, you could earn a healthy living for it, I would quite like to do uh, something, like, where you brought songs to life. Do every day a different song, so, like, one day you might walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> for instance, so, <laughs> jump, live in a prayer, like, that. just, like, every day, yeah. just do... I'm going to let the dogs out today. And, and that's, that's <laughs> the job. You know these songs off the top of your head, for fuck's sake. Uh, I'm sitting here trying to get one. Can I get one out? <laughs> well, I was just thinking of a potential career. I don't know how you get paid for that, but it's basically the idea of right, like an Egyptian. It'd be fair, like if I could kick him out like an Egyptian, uh, as your folks stop you asking what you're doing, I think I could walk like an Egyptian. You, you ever see the guy, there was a boy who auctioned off his body so he got tattoos of different companies on him and he got paid for it and I think he basically got paid to get the tattoo and he never really made much money off the back of it but there's other weird schemes as well so there's a boy that bought a web page and he sold off pixels on the website for a dollar each and I think he made at least a million dollars out of it um, and it, it's stuff, stuff like that so like these, these NFTs I know the Hibs have got a bit of stick for the one that they're doing but and actually, Rangers, I think, have signed up with the same company. Yeah, they, they have. And um, who else? Somebody else just announced themselves having like a, a Man City, I think, as an NFT partner. Aye, but or a, there a seems to be. Partner. It's almost like these very, very, very niche products 
people make money off of and then suddenly everyone's doing them but by that point the fad is already passed as soon as you know about it that's it it's no longer a uh, flavor of the week so you're fucked you're not making any money off it there was a boy that did the swap in as well didn't he like he, he started with, he wanted to get like a house i'm sure i think that's what one, he ended up with but... one red paper clip was that what he started with that's what loads of shit that i could swap like uh uh-uh. But it's no longer a unique concept, and you've not got the opportunity to write a book about it because someone will go, "Ah, it's just like that can't one red paper clip." Somebody's beat it. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Like you're probably better off walking like an Egyptian. Well, it's more fun anyway. More fun to even want to swap stuff. Uh, right, Neil says, if any animal was going to batter all the humans and take over as the dominant species on Earth, what animal would it be, and why? Have to be the lion, wouldn't it? Big fucking strong thing like that. That's it. But lions are big lazy bastards. They only really come to life once. Mm, but just need to get. If I do they? Do they? Is it no the the lionesses that but, do? Uh, they're the hunting? Life. Aye, I mean they're alive, but is it not the lionesses that do the hunting and the lions just kind of set about looking big? Mm. So, so have you read the about? Oh, have you? There's. Have you read the thing about the? Is it the Maasai warriors, the Kenyan tribes? They will oh, again, stop. Remember that they came in very well, but does that does it sound like the kind of book that, that I, I have not read? So, <laughs> so you're saying you're saying lions? They would they would rise up and uh, defeat humans and be kings of the jungle or whatever. But you, you, you tell me a lion couldn't kill a human? Is that what you're saying? No, no, a lion could kill a human. However, right. two humans can stalk and um, exhaust a lion. To the point where the two humans alone, because you would think a no, lion if the two humans were dead bird, I'd fancy the lion. If the two humans were dead bird, the lion would win. Aye, aye. But you would think a lion would still be more than a match for two humans. But two humans can, like, uh, very deliberately, very slowly stalk and uh, track a lion to the point of exhaustion, where the lion is no longer able to fight, and the two warriors will, will kill it. But it's meat. So, lions is wrong. It right needs to be something aquatic, wouldn't it? They need to be a marine animal because everyone's going to get fucking flooded, isn't it? So, spiders. It's got to be spiders. Oh, I swim in spiders, John. <laughs> you say that, but they're swimming snakes. And I think there's an example of a snake as well. Eh, no, a snake, sorry, a spider that can uh, fashion a web that means that it goes over the water. Like a wee hamster in a ball. Well, it's a, a spider in development. I was going to say, see if the spider was going to kill all the humans to take over Earth. Was it going to kill all the animals as well? I think the spider would stand much chance against the lion. Oh, if it could keep up behind it. It's, I suppose Aye. lions and that didn't seem to be scared of spiders. You know, like humans are what scared did, of wee things like that. Uh, what did the book say about spiders and lions? <laughs> Well, I don't know, I can't remember that chapter, but there are more insects on Earth than there are humans. So you just need to get a big a big squad of uh, spiders together and that same sort of line out. The pro sort of line needs to it because he'll be shit scared of spiders. Well, actually, you're right. You need, to, you need to <laughs> deprive the lion of the food source, so go after the lionesses. It'd be trickier, but I think the spiders have got it in the bag. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Okay, yeah. I could be the whale, like the killer whale, probably because that's like the obviously the most dangerous one. I imagine. Uh, I think, uh, ultimately, <laughs> <Is that> me? <laughs> okay, well, it's not going to be the sperm whale, is it? Like, <laughs> he's their only fans. I, he's their only fans <laughs> diving into a sock. <laughs> Killer's whale is going to look at it and have a way to take over the world. <laughs> you distract them, show them the pictures. <laughs> I'm going to do some killing. I, I think Chris Water, the, the world's going to be underwater soon, isn't it? Like that's what the uh, um, COP26 stuff was about. So, yep. Doug's barking in the back, and I apologise if he's repeating that. It's going to be the orang, no, the orangutan. I'm going to go baboon. They're vicious and they will probably outlast humans because they can climb up trees and and we're fucked because they're global <laughs> sea level rising. It's basically going to be survival who can climb the tallest trees. 
Evolution, it will be. It'll be the climbers that survive. Aye. The genetically predisposed to climbing. Like uh, you're, you're like swimming. You're, you're one of the first to go. So if you like swimming, swim. you might be alright. I'm all not right. a big fan of swimming. I'm not a fan of it either, though. Eh? So I can't do it. I, I'd rather do that than climb. Uh, Leon uh, says the fire engines just turn up and head back to the depot if it starts chucking it down. <laughs> I think I, I don't think they do, do they? Sadly, <laughs> no, sadly. <laughs> See, I saw this question and I immediately started thinking, how much rain do you think would be required to put out a house fire? Because that's all firemen use to put out a fire is water, really. That's pressure, huh? Ah, it's, 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 the, it's the volume. Of, so you have to have like enough water because of, of the, the vast heat of a house fire. Right? So when a house fire gets much fucking loose, if you think... The rain probably doesn't even get near it because there's small droplets, so it evaporates before it gets onto the flame. Whereas okay. the, the hose fires that much, uh, so that, is, that pressure that it can tackle the fire. That is like average rainfall, but I th- I'm sure you've talked about it before, but cast your mind back to the abandoned game at Starts Park where it was monsoon weather. Could oh, that, that theoretically put a house fire? That would be a forest fire, that. It might not last so, for long enough, though. It depends how long it lasts as well, eh? And I think I wonder if it would for a minute. If, I wonder if, if it rain would rain at the Celtic game. If that uh, that rain that would put it in Ebola. If that was fucking chucking it doing that night. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Depends how big the fire is. Aye. You can imagine the firemen really like in the firewoman and the in the in the truck kind of going with the sirens going over to the window. Oh my window wipers come on, they're like, Yes, back game. I can Ken, see the <laughs> Ken how after a house fire, the the fire brigade, like they basically they've no ruined the house because the house was fucked anyway, because it was it was up in flames, but the amount of water it usually damages the house sometimes to the point of it having to be turned down. What if just as a random idea? They used a cannon to launch fire extinguishers in, or like some sort of like fire extinguisher grenade. Just keep lobbing them in and just smother the flames that way. Do you think that would work? Uh, Your silence says probably <laughs> not. <laughs> if I, what the fuck do you mean? Right. What, so so you know, like water balloons, you mean? Aye, so I, I'm maybe. It's a bit of a weird concept, but you know how in say like forest fires in Australia, for example, like they'll, they'll maybe get planes that fly over and they've got like yeah. sand or like a flame retardant that they sort of spread over it. So what if rather than just like tons and tons and tons of water being poured into a house, why not just launch in like miniature or large fire extinguishers that have got like a time delay that explode and just smothers the flame that way? Hmm. Take it your second job. Why do we do it? Let's invent stuff. Aye. We'll get on Dragon's Den. So if, we, if right, there's no I'll, anyone I'll who wants me to wank it in a sock for 10% of my company, <laughs> you can have 100 grand for my fire extinguisher grenades. <laughs> I'm looking for one million, pounds, one million pounds for 10% of my company <laughs> to get some fire extinguisher bombs. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea. Yeah. Like, we should go for it, right? Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine Peter Jones sitting going, a oh, fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, that's us with the time for this episode. That's it. I went fast. Oh, fast. We did it with three questions. I, I enjoyed that so much so uh, that I'm going to go and get a top up. I'll be back in two minutes. You get a top up. I'll, I'll stop the recording. Right. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll see you next time. <laughs> The trail me down when I broke free. I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee. 